All right. Golly. Shut up. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to ask Stephanie to come and just say, and I want to open in a word of prayer. Before we start, we got a text this evening, not only, hey, we want to see you at church, but uh, we'd like to ask you to, uh, Ken helps you out flip phones, but we won't read the next text. You can't do that. Some Verizon phones don't read the text. Some Verizon phones. Some, somebody in the seventh grade, help me out. All cell phones don't put, pick up group texting. So, um, here's the thing. Summer trips, you need to get with Sherry tonight. If you don't have your money, which is $30 of $65, just let her know tonight. We're going to make reservations. And, man, surely there's more than six middle schoolers that want to go on this trip. So you need to be getting some information. Let her know because we're not going to we're not going to put it off much longer, okay? Also, high school is going to be July 13th through the 15th, going to Atlanta to a Braves game, and then uh, the Six Flags, and you need to get on the list for that as well. We can't wait till the last minute, guys. We've got to get rooms and, and tickets and all that, so you need to let us know, okay? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, then we'll ask Stephanie to come and get started. God, thank you for this day you've given us. I pray that you would just speak to our hearts. I pray as we open your word and, and look into your gospels, I pray that you would just speak to us. God, tonight I pray that as we open up uh, the book of Matthew and, and we go into talking about fishermen for you and, and how we need to attract other people for you, God. It's all about you. And, and I pray that tonight that we can take this application. I pray that we can embrace it. I pray that we can apply it to our lives. And I pray that we can see results through you living through our lives. I, I just pray that right now as Stephanie comes to sing, I pray that we can begin to pray and, and thank and worship you and ask you to speak to our hearts. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. It's going to be short and sweet. And the words are on the wall so you can see me. So patient, so gracious, so merciful and true, so wonderful in all you do.
Go ahead and get started. Who's got a cell phone right here on the front? I need I need to borrow one. Come on, boys. I know you don't worry about the girls. All right, thank you, Caleb. Dear Caleb. Oh, I hate your guts right there. You gotta know the time. I want to have that. See, they don't even tell me the time. Okay, just tell me the time when I am. I want to get started. I want to talk to you tonight in Matthew chapter 4. If you have your Bibles, <clears throat> turn there. Will it stay like that? Well, I'm not going to do that. <coughs> do what? Show me your phone. Because <coughs> it won't lock. Anybody seen these from back in the 80s? Look, compact, long. Compact. Okay, it's 710. I want to use a real phone. I want to talk to you in Matthew chapter 4. If you have your Bibles, man, I want to talk about one of my favorite subjects tonight. I want to talk about fishing, okay? I want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about fishing, and, and it's one of my favorite hobbies. I love to fish. I love to catch fish, and I think Pastor Derek mentioned it in, in a message here a week or so ago that I even love to lie about fish I don't catch, Okay? I mean, when I catch a fish like this, it goes here automatically. But, you know, I always, whenever I go, I take pictures. Whoever catches fish that way, they can't lie. If they talk about how big the fish is, I've got a picture of it. I'll tell you an example. Caleb Bell, he'll tell you he caught a big fish on the river a couple summers ago, last summer, and he did. I've got a picture of it. It's a big old fish. And I took a picture for that reason because it was big and nice. But anyway, I, I want to tell you about I want to talk about fishing because it's one of my favorite hobbies. It's one of my favorite subjects. I like to talk about it. I like to do it. But but here Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, he's speaking to our hearts and it's all about being fishers for men, of men. You know, he walks up on the Sea of Galilee and he's and just kind of set the stage. He's talking to the people and he goes up to some of his disciples that he's calling to, to, to be disciples and he says, man, I want you to follow me. That means you're going to have to set everything aside. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you how to be fishers of men. So what they're doing is they're getting education on how to graduate from catching fish and learning how to catch men, okay, and women. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. As a believer, if you think about it, I want to make all this stuff relate, even down to the tackle box, okay? Casey Price here tonight. He's probably went fishing. Yeah, cool. Anyway, y'all tell him he's a sinner tomorrow. Anyway, I want to talk about the tackle box and the different things we use, the lures that we use that's creative 
and, and how we attract the fish to us. And, and that's the name of the game when you're fishing. You, you've got to know where to throw the, 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 the lure. You've got to know what color to use according to the weather and, and all these things. So I want to give you some qualities that Jesus taught his disciples how to be fishers of men. So here's the deal, guys. What I want to tell you is if we're born-again believers, and, and, and I honestly think that there's some of you here tonight that know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and if you don't know Christ tonight as your personal Savior, then we can change that. I hope that it changes tonight, and I'd be more than happy to sit down with you and share with you the Scripture and go through the Romans road and show you how to ask Christ into your life and show you what it means in, in accepting Christ as your Savior. But those of you that are born-again believers here, Christ followers tonight, I want to let you know that, man, we got to catch some fish. But here's the thing. With a little bit of effort, and a little bit of skill and a little bit of God we can catch some fish and I'm talking about people if you're here and you have never led anyone to Christ I want you to listen to this because I'm going to give you some good tackle I'm going to give you some good pieces to go with the puzzle to put to, 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 put to use in your life so that you can go into this world and be an example to those that don't know Jesus that's why we're here do I sound like a recording? Do you ever wonder why, Mitch, do you preach on everything? Every week it's about going out and, and, and being the light. Every week it's talking about sharing your testimony. Every week you talk about leading others to Christ. Every week you talk about inviting visitors. Man, let me just tell you something. That's what God's doing. It's not me. I couldn't put that together like that. I couldn't put it together like that. Matter of fact, this message right here, it relates so much to what we've been, what we've been spending our time on in the past several weeks before Tony came and shared the the, the uh, series on, on different religions and things. But I'm going to be honest, this message right here came from my schoolwork. I'm working on my bachelor's degree in ministry through a seminary, and, and some of the stuff that I'm studying, it came right out of that. So there's no way that I could take that, and there's like 20 different papers, tests, and all this CDs and stuff that i got to listen to, and it's online. And, and there's no way that I could say, hmm, I'm going to listen to this because I know what's on there. And it's going to probably pretty much go with what God's trying to teach us in our student ministry. As I begin to listen, I begin to see God is trying to tell us, as born-again believers, we're on a mission. We're on a mission. Fifth and sixth graders, I don't care how young you are. If you've accepted Jesus Christ, man, you can be the light. You can be a light to a dark world that needs to know Christ as their personal Savior. High schoolers, man, let's try to be popular being living for Christ for once. We don't have to fit into the most popular group in our school. We don't have to. We can still be accepted. And we can still be acknowledged. And we can still be loved and liked. Let me just give you this. Last weekend or last Sunday, I was at a birthday party of Hope's. And, and I'm going to be honest. Abigail brought it to the table, man. She brought it to the table. And, and I'm going to tell you, this is Christian. This is Christian friendship. This is relationship. She came and she had for like 16, that's how old Hope is. Ooh, ain't she getting old. She had all these 16 gifts and then wrote po a poem that goes with the 16 gifts and it related to their spiritual walk together. It related to their relationship as friends. I'm telling you, it was real. I told Hope tonight, what I tell you tonight? I said, man, you better hold on to that and you better cherish that because it isn't every day in life that get that. But you know what? It happened right here in our student ministry. It happened right here. Man, if we band together, if we share the common grounds, not coffee, but the common grounds of all believers, and that's the denominator, Jesus Christ. If we share him in each other's lives, if we live together in unity, man, I'm telling you, the sky's the limit. So tonight, I want there's three parts in being fishers of men, okay? You're going to be relieved because here's the thing. There's our part, which is born-again Christ followers, okay? There's our part. I'm talking about Christ followers when I say our part. They're his part with the H capitalized, and I'm talking about Jesus Christ when I say his part. And then there's their part, being the people that we go out.
out into the world and we witness to them or we share Christ with. They've got to put forth some effort as well. So here's the thing. You don't need to take your Bible. Listen, you don't need to put on a suit and tie and be called a preacher and take your Bible about that thick. I'm talking about family Bible. And go into the school and whack somebody over the head. And while they're laying on the gurney, going to the hospital, say, listen, you need Jesus in your life because you're going to hell. Okay? That's not the way. But here's what we're called to do. We're called to spread the seed, just like sowing grass. Okay? We spread the seed, which is Jesus Christ enables us. The Holy Spirit enables us. And I'm going to cover a little bit about, about that. And if there's some of you here that don't believe in the Holy Spirit and don't believe there's really power, i got Scripture to back it up. And I'm telling you, man, the power of the Holy Spirit is unbelievable and will be in your life if you will allow it. If you're here and you're a Christ follower, I promise you, the Holy Spirit has tried to speak to your heart at some point or another. Now, whether you've got it or not, I don't know. But I'm telling you, there's power in the Holy Spirit. And He enables us to go and share the gospel, to share our lives, to be a light, to have joy. So our part is number one. If you're taking notes in, write this down. If you're not, write it down here. But number one, it's 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 our part is to follow him. We've got to follow him. And what I'm saying, guys, if you're here tonight and you don't know Christ as your Savior, the first thing you've got to do to follow is accept him as your Lord and Savior. I can't stress the, the importance of that. I can't tell you enough about, man, you were put here to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. And if you don't, listen, I've used this analogy. Who in here, I just want you to raise your hand. Have you ever had to go anywhere with your mom or dad or, or somebody to a banquet or a, to a dinner or some type of wedding where you had to dress all up and you sit there and, and you're sitting around people that you don't necessarily know and you got to squeeze the ketchup on the french fries and you're scared you're going to squeeze it on yourself and all this. Yeah, they done raised their hand. See, they've been there. Anybody been there? Raise your hand you've been out of place. Okay? Raise your hand if you've been out of place. We all have. Yeah, you... I've been out of place a lot of times. It's unbelievable. But, man, okay, you can put them down. The Bible tells us, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 25, he tells us that hell was prepared for who? Who? The devil and his angels. So, really, it, it doesn't say, man, hell was prepared for the devil and his angels and then just a few more people that go to volunteer. That's not the way it works. It says in Matthew 25 that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, period, period. Therefore, if you're here on this earth, if you're here tonight in this student ministry, if you have lived here in this community or wherever, I don't care if you've lived in Poland, it doesn't matter to me, but if you're living on this earth and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you're living out of place. Understand? Not to mention, if you die, it's a whole different story. When you die and you go to hell, when you don't believe in Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, and again, I'm not trying to use the scare tactic, but I'm giving you some reality, guys. Listen to me. If you've never listened before, please start tonight. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will not enter the gates of heaven. I don't care if your grandfather preached or your mom is a missionary. I don't care. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And God says that we're only drawn by the Father, and that's when the Holy Spirit uses his power, Allison, you know the feeling, and comes up and says, man, you need to do something. You need to do something because you know what? I'll just be honest with you. Man, the Holy Spirit, when he spoke to my heart at nine years old, he said, you need far more than your mom right now to help you. You've got to accept me as your Savior. And man, I'm going to tell you something. When, when the Holy Spirit convicts us, when we're drawn by the Father, when he convicts our hearts, we'll go on the way to heaven. But you cannot go to heaven. Therefore, if you died and go to hell, simply because it means that you're going to live, get this down, you're going to live in eternity out of place. Out of place. Out of place. Miserable. A 
around people that you that you normally don't hang out with, around around things that you normally don't hang out with. The whole environment is going to be your outcome. <clears throat> Each one of us is called to follow him through relationship. Through relationship with Jesus Christ first, we can follow him. Also, we follow him with the relationship of reading our Bibles. Listen, we've got to get out of the schools living in sin. We've got to turn from the way of the world, and we've got to be different. We're called to be set apart. His word tells us to be holy. Does anybody know what holy means? His word tells us in several places to be holy. That means to be set apart, to be different. You're called to be different. You're called to be set apart. And be, I, I didn't say better. I didn't say to rub it in people's face <clears throat> that you're a better person, got more money, you dress better. You, that's not the key here. Get me right. We're to be set apart, to be holy, to be the example, to lead with our influence, to lead by example that others may come to know Jesus Christ through our example. Let me ask you a question. There's some of you in this room. I don't want you to raise your hands, but I want to ask you a question. I want to give you a gauge. I'm, I'm good at giving gauges that go from empty to full, from start to finish, and, and stop to start. I, I, I like giving gauges because I like looking and I look at mine a lot. That's how God deals with my heart a whole lot. I look at different areas of my life, and I can look right through the, the glass, the stained glass, and I can see what's going on. And, and, man, it doesn't take long for me to realize that, you know what, I stink. Or those of you that haven't had the word, I, I like to use the word sip, okay? I sip at living my spiritual walk at times, and God deals with my heart. And, and man, I'm going to tell you something, but I want you to look. Let me ask you, there's some of you sitting here tonight, there's some of you in the midst tonight of God and his people right here, and some of you have parents that don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's some of you that have best friends in your school that you would go out on a limb for, that you would do anything in this world for. They're your best friends. You claim that you would do anything in your life to help them. There's some of you that have mediocre friends that, that they're the ones that you talk to every day. They're the ones you spend the night with every other three weeks or four weeks or something. Not considered a best friend, but they're a good friend. Let me ask you something. With all the people in our life that don't know Jesus Christ, how much of a burden will there be in your life? When I say a burden, missionary uh, journeys, three trips he went on, but I'm going to tell you, the whole goal, the whole vision, the whole meaning of Paul leaving and going on these trips was one thing. He loved his friends, he loved his enemies, he loved people, and he give 110% in being an influence and an example to see people come to know Jesus Christ as personal Savior. How many people, guys, have we wept over? How many people have we actually led
there was people right then that went, Whoa. they seemed alive. Because you know what? They said, that's proof right there. I can wait till I'm old. I can wait for a few days before I die, and then I'll accept Jesus Christ my son. That's not the way it operates. That's not the way it works. And I'll guarantee you, if Miss Whalen could come back and say one thing right now, number one, she'd say, well, take me back home because I don't want to be here no more. Number two, she would say, if there's one regret that I have at the age I am of accepting Christ, here's the one regret that I have, not accepting him years ago when I could fulfill and live on purpose for my Savior that died for me and loved me so much. And you've got to understand, Jesus has got to mean more than a guy with long hair and climbed up on a tree and died and rose and, and da-da-da. He's got to be more than a cartoon character to us guys. He's got to become real. High schoolers, some of you some of you need to step up right now and be leaders. It's time. I am all about high school leadership. I think it's time for you to start stepping up into maturity and leading people to Christ and leading in here by example. It's time. We've got to follow him. We've got to follow him. That's a relationship. Second, in our part, the second part of that is we have to let our light shine. You say, Nick, how do I do that, man? There's so much going on today. Listen, quit being sour. And I'm going to tell you, Bobby will tell you this. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. Bobby's the most sourest person. I'm kidding. God has dealt, dealt with me over this. Bobby will tell you I'm one of the sourest friends that he's got. And I'm going to be honest right now. Because, man, as I studied for this message, God nailed me. He said, why would anybody come to know Jesus Christ when you're a sourpuss? Why would anybody come to know Jesus Christ watching you walk down the road, Mr. Youth Pastor? Why would anybody listen to you when very seldom do you let your light shine? I'm going to tell you something. It messed with me. No, hold on just a second. This food line thing, you want to go outside and take this? <laughs> they probably want him to come to work or something. Anyway, we got to let our light shine. That's on YouTube, too. Listen to me. Through your relationship with Jesus Christ, you can be happy, guys. We can have... The, we can have that happy smile on our face. We can be happy. It's like the guy, I don't know if you've heard the story. I, I used to work with a guy at, at, at Eastman, and, and I shared with you that he didn't know if, if he was supposed to go on this mission trip or not. Some of you heard this. Let me share real quick before we close here in just a second. But, but he didn't know if he was supposed to go, and it was like Venezuela. And, and he lives in Johnson City, and he didn't know if he was really supposed to go or not. He prayed about it, and he prayed about it. And, you know, when you pray about certain things and God don't give you no answer and you don't have a lot of clarity and, and all this, maybe God's putting the answer in your face and you don't really realize it and you continue to pray and you continue to do what you got to do and all this. Well, this guy continued to go on, and, and, and he said, you know what? He said, I, I don't have clarity here, but I'm going to go. So he gets on a plane, and he goes, and he's going to be gone for 10 days. And, and while he's gone, he's... he's he gets there and he's praying still, God, I hope this is your will because I'm on a plane and anything could happen. But he gets there, he goes and everybody with him gets their clothes. He, his clothes don't show up. Okay, he's got one outfit on and he's out there beating a rock on it, putting it in the creek and washing it every day. And we're four or five days in and he still don't have his clothes. Now you imagine what's running through his head. Maybe I wasn't supposed to be here. But anyway, he kept a positive attitude. He began, kept washing his clothes. It was like the sixth day before they come home on the seventh or eighth, whatever, and they said, hey, we got your clothes. And he said, just keep them, send them back home. I'll be home before I get them, and I'll just come pick them up. So he gets back to Johnson City, Tennessee, and he's cutting his grass like a day after he gets back. He's cutting his grass in the airport. Tri-Cities Airport's probably 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes from his house. A lady calls and says, hey, so-and-so, we have your clothes here at the airport. He says, that's pretty cool. I'll be over to get them in a little bit when I get through mowing. So he gets through, and he goes over there, and he walks up to the, to the, the counter where this young lady's standing there, and she looks like she's been beat to death. 
because you can imagine if anybody else lost their clothes that day, what they'd done to her, they probably took cane poles and everything and whipped her. But anyway, he goes up to the counter and he says, yes, I'm so-and-so, I'm here to pick up my clothes. I've been gone out of the country for a while. I've just got back. I hadn't seen my clothes, blah, blah, blah. And she says, I'm sorry, your clothes haven't got here yet. And he starts laughing. He just starts to horse laugh. This lady's mouth, her jaw hit the counter. And she is kind of like this when he'd move because he, she just knew he was going to knock her out. Mad, ill. And he keeps laughing. And she said, Sir, what are you laughing about? And he says, You know what? This is crazy. And he said, I just got to let you know something. I don't know why, but he said, There's this guy that lives in my heart that allows me to be happy. And listen, we're talking out of the country. Back home, cut the grass, nasty, sweaty, grass all over him. He goes to the airport 10 minutes away from his house and tells this lady, man, I've got something in my heart. And this, this is a guy that I know and I met some years ago, and he can make me happier than anybody. He can give me the joy to laugh right now when a lot of people don't know how. And you know what she's saying? Through his happiness, through him smiling, I don't care if he had teeth or not. It don't matter if he had teeth. He was smiling. I mean, he could be the ugliest human being in the world, but he was smiling, he had joy, and he was letting his light shine. The young lady looked at him, and she said, you know what? She said, I want to meet the guy that you know. I want to meet him. Ten minutes away from his house, he had a lady that smiled. And he walked in the jail for her. I told her that. He didn't even have to go to dinner for her. He should have just went over and told her, lost his clothes and smiled at him. It all been over with. But God took him and used all that. Man, it's cool because all you got to do is be happy. God wants us to let our light shine. The last thing we all want to see is someone who's always frowning, gloom and doom, down on life, just pity party all the time. That's not leading by example. And that isn't where we need to be. But you can let your light shine. Third, we need to have joy in the Lord. When you have these two last things, when you can follow him as a Christ follower, when you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you begin to follow him with relationship and how, have compassion for others, and, and men begin to live him, and you begin to let your light shine, you begin to step out, and you've started to be the example to influence. I'm telling you something, guys. Listen, those of you that have got MVP awards, those of you that, that have won money, I don't care if you played bingo or won the lottery, I don't care what you've done. Those of you that may have got a car last year for Christmas, I don't, I don't know. The best gift that you can think of right now that you've received in the last year, the best gift, let me go back, the best gift that you've ever received in your life, in your life, the best gift that you've ever received, listen, will not bring you joy like knowing Jesus Christ following him and letting your light shine for his very purpose. In God's word in the New Testament, listen to me, in 60 verses, in 60 verses in the New Testament, the word joy is mentioned 63 times. 63. In 60 verses, 63 times. You think you're trying to steal joy? As believers, as believers in seeing our lost family, our lost our lost friends, I'm broke. Our enemies, in seeing these people come to know Jesus Christ, we gotta follow him, we gotta let our light shine, and then we got to have joy in our hearts. Now, real quick, what time is it, Corey? Huh? Next is his part, okay? I'm going to wrap it up real quick. The next is his part. He will make us fishers of men, okay? You don't have to worry about that because God will enable you to be fishers of men. He took his disciples, guys, listen. Thousands of years ago, he took 12 disciples. And he used them. Did you know that if it wasn't for the 12 disciples, if it wasn't for them living their life for Jesus Christ, from the time that he called them to live on purpose, did you know that we wouldn't be here in church? 
And, it, you know, Paul even said back in the days of the Bible, when he, when he, you read some of his books, and, man, he wrote the majority of the Bible. When you read in there what he's wrote, he said, man, the world ain't going to go. He spoke of the, the rapture then. He spoke of Jesus' return back in the Bible days. We can't just say, man, because God's going to send his son, because Jesus is coming back to get us. We just don't worry about it. We don't have time to read. We ought to be reaching more than we can possibly stand right now simply for the fact of knowing that Jesus is going to come back. If it wasn't for the 12 disciples, we wouldn't be here in church being able to worship and live for Christ today. If, if, if you don't live, if you, his disciples that's here tonight, born again, cross father, if you don't live your purpose for him, if you don't live for what he's called you to, that means that 35, 45, 55 years from now, they may not even have church. Do you understand? It may become a law that they can't even carry their Bibles in public, even here in the Bible Belt, if we don't take a stand for God and His Word. Man, He says that He will do His part. The Holy Spirit will convict hearts. There's some of your friends that you've seen God deal with. There's some of your friends that you've seen the very conviction of God and the Holy Spirit at work asking questions to you, asking things about that they normally don't ask, acting in ways that is different. You've seen the Holy Spirit mess with them. Have you took advantage? Have you took the opportunity? Have you used your abilities to share Christ with these people? And the writing is plain if we would just read it. Jesus knows his heart. The Holy Spirit will convict hearts. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict the hearts of others, not ours. That's why I'm saying, man, all we've got to do is follow him, shine our light, and have joy in him. Example, when Paul was thrown into prison for being a Christian. Do you remember that? Paul was thrown into prison for being a Christ follower. He really was. He was thrown into prison. He was beaten. He was shackled. And still, still he did his part. He found a way, even beaten and shackled and put in prison, he still found a way to follow him and to let his light shine and to have joy. He still had that relationship. Regardless of the obstacles, building should. The jailer, jailer came to know Christ. The jailer's family even came to know Christ. The Holy Spirit will never fail to do his job. When Paul, Paul, being beaten, put in prison, through him following Christ, through him letting his light shine, and through him having joy in his heart, it only comes from the Lord. And he's seen spent time with the jailer and led him to Jesus Christ and he also went to the jailer's house and led his whole family to Christ I'm telling you, if you've never led anybody to Christ you don't know what you're missing you don't know what you're missing it ought to be each one of us as Christ followers it ought to be our mission it ought to be our goal it's got to be our focus Paul followed Paul let his light shine and Paul had joy in his heart also, his part is the Holy Spirit empowering us to say the right word, to be the right person, to do the right thing, to do all these things that it says right here. In, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But you shall receive power. This is in, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. It doesn't say that you may be witnesses. It doesn't say that in time you will be. It says power of the Holy Spirit has come upon you and that means when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Holy Spirit comes into your heart. It is a free gift. And it says that you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. It'll be in your heart. The Holy Spirit will convict. The Holy Spirit will empower you to move and live for Him if you allow it. Third, their part. 
say there. I'm not talking about the extreme people. I'm not talking about the ones that don't fit in here. I'm not talking about a group of ugly people out there that we don't associate with and don't like. I'm talking about when I say there, I'm talking about T-H-E-I-R, they, them out there, the lost. I'm talking about some of your best friends. I'm talking about your mom and dad. I'm talking about people that make a lot of money. I'm talking about people that are poor. I'm talking about people that are very educated. I'm talking about people that are very dumb. I'm talking about people that may be deaf. Okay, I'm not, I'm not throwing anybody out of the mix. I'm saying if they don't know Jesus Christ, that puts him in T-H-E-I-R, their heart. Okay? Lost people. The people in our lives, the people we come in contact with, our family, friends, the lost, has to do their part. Understand right now before we go any further, you may spread seed, you may pray every night, you may be the best example that you can possibly be, and I'm going to be honest with you. When the best friend, when the parent, when, when the stranger, when the enemy, when somebody, the teacher, whoever, when, the, when they don't come to know Jesus Christ, listen to me, we can't get discouraged because we spread seed. Their part, their part, as we spread the seed, as the Holy Spirit begins to water, their part is to what? Excel. Okay? They have got to make a choice to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You cannot do it for it. Listen, that's the beauty of salvation right now. It's a free gift. It's very simple. But your own parents can't accept Christ for you. You have to do it yourself. Same way here. So understand, everyone will not come to know Christ as their Savior. If we're consistent in doing our part, Christ will do His part, and we will see things happen in people's hearts. Listen, I want to give you not only when Paul and Silas went to the prison, they continued to worship, they continued to pray, they continued to follow, let the light shine and all that, but I want to give you another example. In, in Acts chapter 8, verse 26, there's a guy named Philip. Philip's at time where they had this big revival, they were Pentecost, and he's sitting under a tree and he's resting, and, and the angel comes to Philip, okay? The angel comes to Philip and he says, hey, dude, I need you to get up, and I want you to go south towards uh, Gaza. Philip didn't look at him and say, wow, I don't want to go right now. I'm too tired. I, what do you need me to do? It says that when the angel said, I need you to go south towards Gaza, go read it. In, in, in Acts chapter 8, look, look around there and see. And start, it's around 25, 26, 27, somewhere around there. But, but it says, I need you to go south towards Gaza. It said that Philip got up. There was, this, there was this Ethiopian that had been to the Pentecost. He'd been there with all the gathering, and he was on his way home. He was on a chariot. He was going, and he had, he had something like the Bible, a scroll or whatever, and he's sitting, and he's trying to read the book of Isaiah. And he gets to a part in the book of Isaiah, and this, this whole story will tell you about it. He gets to a point in the Scripture that he's reading, and he can't understand it. And he says, man, how do I understand unless somebody shows me? That's when the angel went to, to Philip and he said, Man, I need you to go south towards Gaza. Why? Because you're going to lead somebody to Christ. You're going to follow me. You're going to let your light shine. You're going to show him the joy in your heart. That's your purpose. Man, Philip, boom, he left. And when he sat down with the Ethiopian, when he sat down with the Listen, I tell you about the blessings. Listen, I can't tell you no different than this story right here. It's a perfect example. I, I'm telling you, not only did Philip know the, 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 the voice of Christ when the angel spoke to him, man, you could tell he had relationship. You could tell that there was his light was shining. You could tell there was joy in his heart. Because here's the thing, and I tell you about that blessing more so than any gift, any amount of money, anything you've ever had. Because here's what happened. It says that when Philip dunked the dude, when he baptized him, it said that he wound up in another town. That's scary. Philip was
was so caught up in the Holy Spirit. He was so happy. I don't know if he kind of skipped to the loo. I don't know if he kind of made one hop. I don't know if he rode a helicopter. It don't matter. But, the, but what I got out of the story is, man, he was so caught up in Jesus Christ that he just disappeared and wound up in another town. Could you imagine that, him popping another town in a barn or something? I'd land on a donkey or something. We'd take off running. But, man, I'd be caught up in the Holy Spirit, right? But I'm telling you, man, that's the blessings that, okay, yeah, that's cool. It says, when they came out up out of the, the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Listen, if you want to get out of school and lead somebody to Jesus, caught up in the spirit man live your life for Jesus follow him let your light shine and have joy that's your part can everybody remember that go home I want you to pray about it I want you to do your quiet time about it Matthew 4 18 look there I want you to, I want you to look at Philip here in Acts chapter 8 look at his story then he followed and he let his light shine and he had joy that's our All heads bowed, eyes closed, man. We're going to close, and I just want to ask you a couple questions.